give to you the brightest TV on the market, the so, no, sorry, wait, the TC, um, actually, wait, wait, what did I actually say in my last video? The Bravia 9 is probably the best TV currently on the market. I said probably, guys, probably the brightest TV out there. And a lot of you decided to chastise me and tell me, no, there's a TCL, the, the QM8 is the brightest TV out there, 5,000 eight. so here it is. Welcome to the channel guys, Thunder E, where I make videos because you guys ask me to, force me to, or just harass me to. I'm joking actually, I wanted to cover this video, uh, this TV. But this is the TCL QM8. This is the AQD Mini LED TV. And this is a beautiful TV and also a big bad boy. It goes all the way up to 98 inches. What's interesting about this TV is that I do have the 75 inch variant here and honestly, it's much lighter than the Sony. It's lighter to set up, it's lighter to carry around, and it's a, it's a light TV. In terms of the structural build, you've got something that has a mixture of, of course, plastic around the exterior. You've got that QLED, mini LED display. It looks absolutely gorgeous. And you've got built-in speakers around the TV. Aesthetically, TV looks good. Uh, when you're looking at it front facing, it's fine. And when you kind of look closer, the plastic does have more of a very cheaper feel to it when you're touching, especially just connecting the connectors at the back, that kind of stuff. But that's something that I will point out later when we get to audio. Now, in terms of ports, we have four HDMI ports at the back uh, towards the right-hand side if you are facing the TV. And one of the ports is uh, 4K 144, the first port. The second one is 4K 120, and the other two ports are 4K 60, and you're going, you should all have 4K 124. And I do agree, I think that it should be a standard, but honestly, the only two gaming consoles that can support anything at 4K 120, uh, unless you, of course, you wanna connect the PC as well, but that 4K 144 is nice to see. Now, overall, this is running Google TV and the UI interface is something very familiar. We've seen it with other TCL TVs that have Google TV. We just saw that recently with the Sony Bravia, but TCL has their own little extras that they add to it. They've got, of course, the TCL section, which you can access that shows you a lot of free content, which is nice. Uh, there's a library that also houses your DVR and all your own personal content pulled in from your different subscription services. So in my case, I have DVR content from um, YouTube TV. Please forgive the Kim Kardashian stuff. I did not DVR that, somebody else did. A lot of people have access to my YouTube TV. And then we also have movies and content that I have actually, I own and purchased through YouTube as well. So that kind of thing is nice, being able to curate your own content quite easily. Now, this is of course using Google TV, so I don't know how much leverage uh, TCL has here, but I do like the fact that they have that section with just, just the free content. So what is it like watching content on this TV, especially at 5,000 nits maximum brightness? 5,000, 5,000, 5,000 nits. That's what we're here for, right? This is probably one of the brightest TVs. I say probably again, because somebody might come up with a 8,000 nit TV next. But this TV is really bright. When you're watching any content, you can clearly see how bright it is, whether you're playing uh, video games, whether you're watching content on YouTube, or just watching movies as, as its own. Overall, it does help in a lot of darker scenes, especially when you're gaming. So for instance, played some uh, Hellblade 2, which on the Sony Bravia had a much more darker stoic experience. This felt just brighter, much brighter than I thought it should be. I didn't change any settings within the game. I just basically turned it on and played. And that's something to take note. It wasn't bad. There was nothing wrong with it. It just was a much brighter experience. Now the TV does have different modes, different uh, picture modes. You know, you've got video, vivid. Um, you've also got movie mode. You've got game mode. And of course, I allow the TV to switch to those modes. The only thing I did differently was adjust the brightness at certain times where I felt that it was a bit too much. And that's something here that I'm going to put out as my first point with this TV. While this TV is very bright, it's brightness control, especially within certain game settings or also certain viewing settings, are not as precise as I would like. That is something that I think they need to work on next with this TV is basically controlling how the brightness is used between scene to scene 
um, how also the, the, the balance of the TV, especially with color, color volume, all that stuff is brought together. You know, what engine are they using to drive that? Now, mind you, I'm, I'm not saying it's bad. I didn't say it's terrible. I'm just saying it, they need to do a much better job. With all the games we played, be it the very first Gears of War, because of course E-Day is coming out soon, actually next year, Hellblade, um, Spider-Man, God of War, and even Horizon West, they all looked drastically brighter. The scenes felt brighter, and I think the TV handled its general process as well. I just think the brightness control was a bit off for me while using this TV. Now, when it came to watching content and say watching something like Batman v Superman, which I can't show you because I will be struck with copyright strikes faster than you can say Flash. Did you say Flash? Okay, anyway, um, it looked good. Batman v Superman looked very nice. I did like the scenes where the color popped out, uh, where Batman's dragging Superman after he's beating him, and also when the kryptonite you know, shows. The movie is a dark movie in terms of just the color palette scheme of the movie, but it still has some very bright sequences, especially with the machine gun fire, the fires, the kryptonite, and those things came out well. I think the TV handled a lot of these um, aspects well, especially because, you know, Going to a maximum brightness of 5,000 nits means that, of course, this is only in certain sections, which works well for content like this, where there's only a section of grip tonight here, there's an explosion there, it's not just all over, all over the screen. So I say it passed with flying colors. Now, when we move over to audio, this is where, mm, mm, how do I say it? Um, get a soundbar. I think that's the best answer for it. Now, I'm sure a lot of people will talk about it, and what you will notice is how I keep reducing the volume because of the way audio is built into it. But let's take a listen first, and then we'll talk about it. Artists use colors to express their innermost thoughts and feelings, creating visual masterpieces that resonate with audiences on a profound level. Come on. Yes, a lot of rattling. And that brings me back to my use of plastic or types of plastic. So one of the things I noticed as well watching content, especially just those beautiful 8K videos, right? Uh, with cinematic sounds in the background, is the fact that like when I crank the volume up to 50, which I usually try to do with built-in speakers and TVs, it sounded very loud but also vibrations from that center speaker on the back uh, plastic panel starts vibrating throughout the TV, then towards the TV stand. So everything starts vibrating down, almost touching the floor, even down to the basement. I'm joking, didn't go that far. But it became a very annoying experience watching content. So you had to reduce that volume down. Uh, even to 25, uh, in terms of the volume levels, it still was giving that rattling feeling. So it had to go lower than that, which means at some point you can't hear your content as well. I did dab around with the audio settings, uh, the sound settings in there, and you know, a couple of things you can do to try and mitigate that. But the best experience truly is with the sound bar. Um, and I think that's something just to take note because Though they tried, though they've added some really nice speakers in a sense, I don't think it's added anything to the viewing experience. It's probably taken away because the TV does a really good job with its processing and how it actually depicts pictures. Now, in terms of uh, reflections and also anti-reflective nature, it, TV actually handles well. Now, when it's off and you know it's it, the screen's all black, I can clearly see myself right there. But with sunlight coming in, I didn't have any issues at all. Um, I think it does a really good job in a brightly lit room with its anti-reflective coating. Some people ask about uh, black levels. Black levels on this TV are really, really good, especially for something that's not an OLED. Uh, just looking at some of the content that has a lot of black, like the ox standing right there in front of you, looks absolutely gorgeous. This TV is solid. And when you pair it with the fact that the TV is now currently priced at 1,799 for a 75 inch. That's impressive. 
It truly is impressive. And that begs the question some people have asked, and I've seen that even in my videos, would I get the Bravia 9 over this? And I think it all depends on how much money you have to spend. That's honestly the case there. If you wanna go for a, for a TV that gives you the best bang for your buck, the TCL uh, QM8 is definitely that TV and something I think TCL can definitely improve on and keep showcasing some really great experience for users, whether you're gaming, watching TV, or just scrolling through and looking for content, you will find what you're looking for. Uh, but I think that's where this TV lands and I really appreciate that. And also, setup process is pretty easy in terms of the setting up the stand, though I will say some of the build materials should be improved overall uh, just to give a better experience. Remote control itself is pretty basic. I don't like the full woody metal-ish type look to it. Uh, I think the, the remote is fine, uh, especially with the quick access to things like Netflix. Apple has a quick access here and Pluto TV. I don't know why they paired Apple with Pluto TV. But anyway, there's still access to your content pretty clearly. Another thing with this remote is that it comes with two AA batteries and you're going, what's wrong with that? Well, it's fine and dandy, but in this day and age where some TVs have um, can be charged via solar and even electromagnetic waves. Uh, other TVs have USB Type-C charging, which is all I need, just rechargeable batteries so that I don't have to swap batteries. And also it's better for the environment. I don't use a lot of batteries. You get the idea. Besides all that, all I have to say is this, is that if you're looking for a big screen TV that has some very great picture quality and has probably one of the highest nit brightnesses on the market. The TCL QM8 is that TV for you. I can definitely recommend it. I just suggest you get a soundbar. So if you guys have any questions or any comments, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy entertainment.